My name is Heidi Spillan. Um, I'm a, a doctor in Australia and I've been working for the last seven months in Homer Bay in Kenya on an MSF TB HIV program. MSF provide care for 6,000 patients with HIV in Homa Bay in Kenya. 3,500 are on antiretroviral therapy, and that's the main focus of our work in Homa Bay. But we are also involved in TB care in Homa Bay, and we work together with the Ministry of Health in the CHESS clinic. Every year we diagnose up to 1,500 patients with TB, and of those, maybe 900 receive their, their ongoing TB care at the CHESS clinic. When somebody is diagnosed with TB, we offer them a HIV test. And in Homa Bay, we found that 90% of those that we test are also HIV positive. So the two infections do go together. Um, and we know that people who are immunosuppressed are at much higher risk of going on to develop active TB. So what we find in the CHESS clinic is that many of our patients are co-infected and what we've started to do is to manage both conditions together in the CHESS clinic. So they receive their TB care, education, counselling, their TB drugs, but at the same time we also test for HIV, we provide counselling and education for HIV as well. We provide prophylactic antibiotics for the HIV. We monitor the HIV. We look at how advanced their immunosuppression is. And we also start them on antiretroviral therapy um, while they're undergoing their TB treatment. And that all takes place in the chest clinic in the one site. Um, to have um, two different sites for TB and HIV care is difficult for patients, especially in this kind of context where many are, are poor, they're farmers, they don't have money for transport, and to re receive care in two different sites for, for two infections is very difficult for them. So MDR TB is TB that is resistant to many of the first-line drugs that we have available. So it effectively means that if we use standard treatment to treat their TB, the treatment will be ineffective. So some of the main challenges for treating MDR TB are firstly access to the treatment. So in Homa Bay we currently have two, two patients who are under MDR TB treatment. We have a third patient who is waiting to start treatment, but at the moment we don't have the capacity in the hospital, we don't have enough isolation wards to be able to start her treatment. We also are aware that there's four other patients in a nearby district who have confirmed MDR TB treatment and they have requested to join our program so that we can start TB treatment, or MDR TB treatment on them. Unfortunately, MSF doesn't have the capacity to treat all of these patients, and until there is a national MDR TB treatment program, these patients will not have access to treatment. And while they don't have access to treatment, they remain infectious. There is little chance of them being cured if they don't have access to the drugs. And while infectious, they also put others at risk. So especially household members, their partners, their children, they are at risk of also acquiring uh, MDR TB. So for the patient, there are many challenges with taking MDR TB drugs. Uh, it's, it's a very long duration of treatment. The minimum is 18 months. Um, most will, will be on treatment for at least two years. Um, the, the burden of pills that they have to take is, is very, very high. They receive injections every day for the first six months at least. The, the patient that we have who has just completed his, his intensive phase of the TB treatment has received an injection every day for 10 months. Um, for him that's been very, very difficult. Um, as well as that, he also has the side effects of the TB drugs. Um, there's lots of nausea and vomiting. There are other toxicities. These toxicities are much increased if they are also HIV infected or are on antiretroviral therapy as well. Um, often when patients are malnourished, which the majority are, they're underweight and very cachectic initially, to, to have ongoing nausea um, is very difficult when we're trying to rebuild their strength and to, to get them to put on weight, and that's a big challenge for many patients. So one of the patients who we've treated for MDR TB, he was separated for his family. He's been receiving daily injections for 10 months. 
His family have been unable to visit him because they don't have had the money. He's lost his income. His wife um, doesn't have money to afford transport to come and visit him. So he's felt very isolated. He also has two children, which he hasn't seen for, for months at a time. And that, along with the side effects of the TB drugs, it has made it very difficult for him to actually accept his diagnosis. He's become quite low in his mood. Um, and it's difficult for him to see, see a positive future. Um, for him, we have just finished his intensive phase of treatment. And his previous work, he, he did quite physical manual labor. And at the moment, he doesn't has, have the strength to return to that. Um, and what we have been doing with him in the meantime is educating him about TB. And he started to help with education of other TB patients. So he performed some counseling and some TB education to some of the other, uh, other patients that we treat. He has also supported some of the newly diagnosed MDR TB treatment. He, you know, tells him what, what life is like to be an MDR TB patient. He's, he's one of the lucky ones. He has come out at the, the end. He's doing well. He's gaining weight. He's responding to the treatment. And he can provide hope for these other patients who are starting their treatment and are seeing the side effects of how difficult the treatment is of the separation from their families.